Okay, welcome back everyone. I hope all of you had a good lunch. The second part of the session here, I'm actually going to take it off from where John Michelson left off. I'm going to go a little more deeper into the use cases. And hopefully after my session, you'll be able to go back to the demonstration areas to get a live demo on the various different areas. Uh, I run product, my, I'm Aruna Ravichandran. I run product and solutions marketing for DevOps at CA. A little background about myself, I've been at CA for close to a year now. And before CA, I spent about uh, close to two plus years at Juniper Networks. I ran software-defined networking, marketing, and strategy for the company. And before that, I spent about 18 years at HP, doing everything from being an engineer to being a product manager to being able to run a large part of the HP's portfolio on the marketing side. So if you look, if you attended the keynote this morning, and if you look at all the signage today, you know, everything we are talking about is the application economy. In the application economy, every business is now a software business. It does not matter whether it's a healthcare industry, whether it's a retail industry, whether it's a, a communications industry, every business now runs on the software side. Mark Anderson actually made a great quote that software is eating the world in 2011. Little did he realize that you know, the software is indeed eating the world and it's going up the notch. And there are some key big trends which is actually driving this economy. One of them is public cloud. 15 years ago, if you wanted to actually roll out an application and it was hosted within your data center, how much do you think it actually costed in order to run that application within your data center? $150,000. If you now fast forward and look in 2014, how much it costs in order to host that application in a public cloud like AWS, $500 a month. It's no longer a surprise that public cloud services is a $153 billion industry. Another major trend, API management. If you look at API management today, the stat says that 50% of a lot of the B2B collaboration is going to be done through API. And that transformation is already happening. More than 50% of Salesforce.com's revenue is coming through API management. If you look at Twitter, close to $15 billion transactions are done through API. Amazon, close to a trillion. So that train is going very, very quickly. And last but not the least, Mobility is indeed a very critical trend in the market today. And more and more people are downloading a lot of apps, and the experience they expect from the mobile application is going to be tremendous. So in order to compete in the application economy, you need a way to be able to provide an end-to-end -end phenomenal customer experience to your end customers, which means that you should have the ability to be able to roll out these applications in an agile manner, to be able to deliver them rapidly with the high quality. Because if you have the agility, if you can deliver rapid application releases, that's not enough. Because if you, without the quality, it'll break the production. If you were in John Michelson's keynote, he actually talked about that. One of the most important things when you think about RevOps, because you need to make sure that the applications are resilient once they actually hit on the production side. And that is one of the bigger reasons why DevOps is gaining so much momentum. If you think about a traditional dev team and an ops team in most of the large enterprises, you have completely different goals. The dev teams, I was an engineer before, and I know, you know what I was actually gold on. It's all about bringing new features and new applications to market as quickly as possible. And that was the primary goal with the level of quality, but it's, I was not actually gold on how the application actually whether the storm being hosted in production. And so if you look at the modern day developers, they are leveraging public cloud. They are using open source tools because their goal is to bring out new features and applications to market quickly. And then if you look on the ops side, it's all about making sure that you can meet your customer's SLA. You can reduce the mean time between failures while continuing to support the legacy system and infrastructure which is already in place completely different goals. So which is why when the dev releases code and drops it onto the ops side, and the ops is not able to provide the level of customer satisfaction because it breaks the system, it creates that clash between the dev and the ops team. And so 
the in in the, in this world today in order to rapidly deploy applications and bring them to market in order to ensure that dev teams are able to code and bring applications to market very very quickly while working very cohesively with the ops team there needs to be a bidirectional communication and like john michelson said in his earlier part of the keynote it's all about having a single common shared goal and the goal is to provide a phenomenal customer experience by exchanging that bidirectional loop between both the dev and the ops side because you need to be able to provide a high competitive uh, advantage to your end customers so we did a survey about 2 months ago and a part of the survey we used a company called vansom bond they are one of the leading research companies in the world we talked to both dev and the ops teams close to 1500 practitioners both on the dev side as well as the ops side spanning 13 different countries uh, it was a long survey the link to the survey is on our website if you just say ca devops it will take you to the website what we learned was that more and more companies are embracing devops methodology it's a collaborative movement it's all about bringing those best practices in order to establish companies in order to move towards a common goal of being able to bring applications to market with the right quality and we ran the survey last year and we had about 60% of the customers who said they have a devops practice or are looking to implement devops over the next 3 years this year the numbers actually went to 88% so it clearly shows that more and more customers like yourself are now very much aware about the changes which is happening in the devops market so the three main messages you will see all these three messages across the board within all the various different centers um the first one is going to be around agile parallel development like the name says it's all about being able to launch applications quickly by building code in parallel across multiple different development teams and testing teams the second one is continuous delivery it's all about automating the release life cycle so that you can do multi tier complex application releases and the third one is agile operation this is all about making sure that you can have a phenomenal customer experience going all the way from mobile to mainframe in order to provide an end to end feedback loop between the dev and the ops side so this is the portfolio of products which we are going to launch today actually launch today and you'll be able to see across the board within the dev center on the dev ops side as well as the ops center so the first one is agile parallel development uh john briefly touched on why agile parallel development is important right you have you're bringing a brand new application to market the application is going to be a composite application with tons of different features which are tied to it there could be a development team which is developing that in singapore another development team which is developing it in another place and they are dependent on each other and most of the time the challenge they face is they don't have the ability to have the systems available in order to build the code in order to test the code and there is interdependency between the dev teams as well between multitude of dev teams and the test teams so the biggest value we can bring to our customers like yourself is in order to enable the agile parallel development both on the development side as well as the testing side so uh, here we have our market leading service virtualization product which we acquired with a technology 3 years ago we acquired a company called itko as a part of that we acquired service virtualization capabilities with this we now have the ability to emulate unavailable systems we have the ability to emulate data and the performance of production data so that you can actually test your code much more before it's launched into production what we are launching today is bringing the dev to the test side much more closer so a year ago we two years ago we acquired another company called layer 7 with that we actually acquired technology for api management so the name of the product is called developer portal and you'll be able to see a demo of that we now have integrated our api developer portal with our service virtualization tool so let me give you a little more detail with respect to the use case if you are actually developing uh, your apis you if you are a developer you'll basically build your api de definition you now have an opportunity to automatically take that api definition from one of your definition files and import it 
into our service virtualization tool. So you have the ability to create a virtual API tied to the physical API. So what does that mean? It means that you can generate the rapid request response pairs, and you have the ability to test that API even actually before the code is completely built. So if I'm a developer today and I have to basically interface with another development team, I can create my APIs, I can test my APIs, I can publish those APIs through the API developer tool, and another development team, which could be located anywhere in the world, has the ability to consume those APIs and test the APIs, which now enables both the teams to actually work in parallel, bringing the message together on agile parallel development and making it real. Uh, some of the biggest benefits you get is API is huge. Like I said, some of the stats, 50% of Salesforce.com's revenues is driven through API. And if you look at it, this, the market is moving in the direction, and so security becomes another important feature. And in order to publish those code, you need to be ensuring that the underlying consumers have the ability to consume those APIs securely. DirectTV was a great customer of ours. Um, they used service virtualization uh, in about four years ago. They became a customer. They use service virtualization in order to actually emulate a lot of their legacy systems, their billing systems, and mainframe systems. They wanted to be able to compete in the application economy because they wanted to offer a lot of the online services to their end customers. They use service virtualization in order to emulate a lot of the legacy systems so that they can enable their engineers as well as their testers in order to develop in parallel. Some of the benefits they actually got was being able to emulate a lot of the legacy systems which used to take a lot of time in order to provision, and the multitude of development teams were dependent on each other in order to actually get access to those constrained resources. The second use case is around continuous delivery. Um, if you look at the entire release engineering cycle, right? Like once you're a developer, you check in your code. From there, it goes into an integration system. You could have Jenkins, you could have TeamCity, you could have Nexus, it doesn't matter, in order to be able to do continuous integration. From there, the code gets into a, a tool where you actually have to now start thinking about provisioning the environment for your end-to-end -end release management process. You could have any product sets which are available in the market today to be able to do the provisioning. You then also need to do the configuration. Most of the customers, like yourself, should probably have Puppet or Chef in order to do the configuration. And then you have to basically deploy your environment in order to deploy your applications before it actually gets onto the testing side. So this is the complex set of process most of our customers actually go through in order to do these release deployments. And think about the number of releases, because a single application could have several hundred sub-releases tied to it, and they all have to happen in parallel. So what we have is the ability with a single tool, Release Automation 5.5, which was launched today with a lot of enhancements, the ability to plan orchestrate and automate the entire release management process end to end so that you can speed the delivery of a multi-tier complex release application. Uh, John Michelson talked about it during his keynote, which means that there is less amount of manual intervention, so less amount of errors, because the whole process, as the application moves from the development phase all the way on to the testing deployment side, the entire process is automated. You have a centralized dashboard which gives you the complete mapping of all the various different workflows of the complex multi-tier application. The second benefit we get where we differentiate against our competitors in this particular space is you, we know that our customers have a wide variety of tools which you are actually using through the entire process when you're doing your release management. And we have 100 plus integrations out of the box. So if, if you, it doesn't matter whether you have Puppet or Chef or VMware or any practical tool, we probably have an integration which you could leverage in order to automatically connect it with release automation. And if we don't have a particular integration out of the box, what we are launching today is something called RDK, which is called Rapid Development Kit, 
which now gives you as a customer the ability to define that workflow automation for your own custom application or for the application we don't have an integration so that you'll be able to get it up and running with release automation. These are some of the tremendous improvements we have actually made. And once the application gets onto the testing side, we are automatically linking that with service virtualization because release automation can take the virtual services and it has the ability to then uh, help automate the test plans with Lisa test. The new name for Lisa test is called CA application test, which gives you the ability in order to create the test cases and execute it automatically. And uh, this is a huge part of the portfolio. Another interesting uh, use case which we have launched, and you'll be able to see this demo, is that a lot of our customers have our operations management tools. You could be an existing APM customer for CA, or you could be an existing NIMSoft customer. The new name for NIMSoft is Unified Infrastructure Management. So what we did is we have actually created out-of-the-box integrations for both APM as well as unified infrastructure management so that you can automatically instrument the APM probes, APM agents and NIMSoft probes automatically with release automation. So this is, again, you, can, you should be able to see a demo of that within the DevOps wedge. A great example of uh, this particular story is Tesco. So Tesco is one of the largest retail companies in the world. Uh, they're based out of UK, and their primary business model several, for several years was all about being able to have brick and mortar stores. They were a grocery chain, which was incubated and created in London. And they have close to 3,700 stores today with, um, operating you know, all across EMEA. In 2000, they decided that they're actually going to create a new business model and launch their, uh, their say, and provide the same value add to their customers, which they have with their brick and mortar stores, by bringing that online. And the goal they embarked on is they wanted to launch 15 online stores in three years. And their entire release management process was hidden behind four major applications. And each of those applications actually served close to 76 business services. So think about the complexity, because there were four major applications, 76 business services, and each one of those business services went through five different environments in terms of release management. So release engineering, release integration, release deployment, release testing, and then into production. And they have to manage that through a complexity of applications. So they engaged with CA, our CTO, uh, which who, uh, who came into CA through the acquisition with Nolio. The name of the product was called Nolio. Now it's called Release Automation. Uh, he actually went and spent about three months in London with the customer trying to really understand what we need to do in order to automate the entire process end to end. And in order to make the story short, they were able to get tremendous value. The entire process of being able to manage the entire release automation end to end across those five different major, four different major applications spanning 76 different services was completely automated. So once you build a particular workflow for an application, let's assume one of the applications you have, which is tied to a business service, is a WebSphere application. You know, once you actually create the manifest, the workflow for the WebSphere application, you can reuse it any number of times, right? It's build once and reuse any number of times. And that's the value you get in order to automate through the release automation lifecycle. The last one on the message is around the Agile operation side. And the, the, all of the products around Agile operations are being showcased in the Ops Center. And so once your product actually goes from test and gets into production, you know, we have a phenomenal set of product sets in order to help our customers measure the availability and performance of mobile devices, any type of application, Java applications, .NET applications, going all the way into the mainframe. We have products to actually get visibility into mainframe. So you have the ability to have end-to-end -end visibility across the board with CS product sets. And that's not it. The biggest value we are going to bring into this table, you might be wondering, this looks like a very infrastructure application oriented. Where, what has DevOps got to do over here? The value we are going to bring to the table is that a lot of our tools, as we look forward, moving forward ahead, is going to be able to share a lot of the production data automatically with our testing and dev tools. Because the biggest goal with respect to DevOps 
is to enable the collaboration, bring seamless collaboration, seamless feedback between the dev and the ops teams. So being able to take a lot of the production information, automatically bringing it onto the testing side. Being able to leverage some of the scripts which are being used in order to create the test cases and bringing it onto the production side. Think about the bi-directional exchange. So those are some of the key use cases you will see us implement because CA has made big bets with DevOps. It's not just a marketing facade to have you know, DevOps technology from CA. We know that a lot of customers want the bi-directional loop in order to uh, be with CA. So again, going back into this slide, it talks about the product set, right? So today we launched a brand new mobile performance management solution. There is an on-premise version as well as a SaaS-based version. Because mobility is a, one of the key trends. More and more customers need the ability to manage the performance, the KPIs, the metrics, do crash analytics. So let's assume you're looking through your mobile app and it crashes. You want to find out what went wrong. Because like John Michelson said, you know, people download an app, you don't get the experience you need, what do you think you'll do? You'll hit the delete button because you're not going to try that app again. So the mobile performance management is extremely critical to customers and we are looking to provide our customers the ability to manage the performance of their mobile applications with this brand new product which we launched today. In order to provide application performance management, we have been in this market for a long time. We acquired a company called Wiley in 2007. And with that, you know, we have the application performance management product. And most of the customers, when they think about APM, they'll think that, oh, it's the old legacy APM product. Today, what we launched is the ability to automatically simplify the entire management configuration and deployment process. So we have APM 9.7, which got launched today, because a lot of our customers said, the product is great, it gives me the visibility, but it's too complex. I need a simplistic way in order to monitor the performance of my mobile application and manage it from a centralized console. So APM 9.7 is available in the Ops Center booth. Please do check it out. And then last but not the least, uh, if Sorry, but last but not the least, we have cross-enterprise APM, which gives you deeper visibility into the mainframe products. So if you want to have an end-to-end -end visibility with a CA portfolio which is integrated, a single pane of glass going all the way from mobile to mainframe, we have all of those products actually brought together. National Australia Bank is a phenomenal use case. I actually had the opportunity to personally work with this customer. They were one of the beta customers for mobile app analytics. And the customer also has release automation, service virtualization, and they have our APM product. Uh, this customer co-presented with me at the Cloud Expo DevOps Summit, uh, which happened in New York about four months ago. So I had the opportunity to really understand the use case, the transformation the customer has gone through in terms of aligning the goals. And one of the key things I learned from the customer was that in, he started the journey as a trial, because they wanted to truly bring about collaboration between dev and ops. We all talk about shared goals, but, but in a perfect world, it's not very easy to do, because it's completely different organization, completely different management structure. And the, the learning for me was that he was able to create a mini team, you know, pulling in people on the development side, being, pulling in people on the release side, on the performance testing side, and then on the operation side to launch one application and learning from the application, and that team had a common goal, and it was all about providing a phenomenal customer experience. And he used that as a benchmark in order to refine the process. So he had a bunch of our tools, he had a bunch of other tools, which most of you guys actually will have in your environment, and he was able to build the DevOps practice, the close collaboration, uh, in order to basically bring the dev and the ops teams together. It's a fantastic use case. The deep, if you basically Google CA and uh, National Australia Bank, you'll see the complete slide deck, which I co-presented with a customer on Slideware. So last but not the least, right? So you, I talked about the three main use cases, agile parallel development, continuous delivery, and agile operations. And, you'll think, and most people will come and ask me, is mobile DevOps a separate market? And the answer is no. Even if you look at DevOps, it's got six different markets within it. 
So mobile DevOps or DevOps for mobile is nothing but a complete aggregation of all the three main use cases which I talked to you about, which is around being able to enable developers to develop in parallel. But the tools you're going to use are going to be mobile-centric tools. And specifically, see, speaking on CA side, I talked about our CA API developer portal, which gives you the ability to create and publish APIs. We have linked it with service virtualization in order to automatically create virtual services to those physical APIs. From there, you can use release automation in order to automate the entire life cycle end-to-end, -end, going all the way from build into the deployment side. And then once the application hits the production, we, I talked about the new product which we launched and brought to market, which gives you the ability to measure the performance of the uh, mobile device with mobile app analytics. So DevOps for mobile is just a vertical within DevOps, and it's using a lot of tools. And what we have done at CA is to provide that close cross-linkage integration across the tools, because nobody wants to use 100 different tools with a different user experience. The goal is to provide a phenomenal customer experience as you start using the tools from a single pane of glass. So if I ca I've come to the last part of my presentation, so why CA? Because you, if you look at it, there are a lot of custom, I won't say a lot, there are a couple of big vendors who are talking about DevOps, right? And we have made big bets with DevOps at CA, which is why you see a DevOps wedge, you see Dev Center, you see Ops Center. We truly want to be able to provide value to our customers and in the earlier part of the keynote, I actually talked about it. DevOps is just the technology is what CA will actually provide, but DevOps is a transformation, it's a movement, it's people, process, and technology. And there needs to be certain transformation you would have to make in order to embrace the DevOps journey, and we'll provide you with the tool set, and that's not it, we'll also provide you with the services. So today, we are actually announcing a very strategic partnership with PwC, uh, who is going to build a specific DevOps practice around our portfolio. And that's just the beginning. We hope to have a lot of those services offered to our customer because it's not easy to go down this traction because, like I said, different groups, different organizations, different goals, different management structures. You know, and so customers need to start at a particular point. And so we'll be able to offer a lot of additional new practice so you have a choice in terms of which vendor you want to choose in order to help you in your journey for DevOps. Um, and so if you have any questions, I'm going to be here post-presentation for the next 15 minutes. Happy to chat with you. Thank you very much for attending my presentation. We have Jean Kim tomorrow who will be uh, talking about DevOps. He's known, if you don't know him, he's regarded as the father of DevOps. He's written the famous book, Phoenix, uh, Phoenix Project, which truly talks about the dev and the ops side. We have a detailed presentation on DevOps for mobile with Jonathan Lindell. So like I said, we launched a brand new product and brought it to market called Mobile App Analytics. And Jonathan Lindo is the VP of Engineering, and he'll talk about that particular product set. And, and on the last day, you know, we have Andy Mann. Andy Mann, if you don't know him, he's, uh, he works for John Michelson. He's going to talk about what next. You would have heard so many presentations. You would have gotten a lot of demos. Where do you know, go next as a part of your journey? Do visit his session on 11.12 at 11.15 a.m. Thank you very much.